Something special. Life of the party. Something special. Jay Coulson. Man with Jimmy in the back. Something you know how special. we do. Rockstar life. Life of the party here with Jay Coulson. Jay, you got any words for the party? Always the rock of the party, man. Right? Rockstar life. All right, so Jay, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, how you heard about life of the party. Man, I'm from the Bronx, New York. I'm saying I'm out here with the homies, life of the parties and all that. And I heard about them socially, but got a couple people that, you know, small world. Networking is everything. That's true. Networking is everything. So, so when did why did you start making music, Jay? I mean, I've had a passion for music from as early as I can remember. Like, I remember getting suspended for school for writing like crazy poems, and, and, and people were like, "Yo, this kid is wild." And, like, <laughs> I remember those days, man. And um, from there, I just ended up finding instrumentals, and then I learned the instrumentals were really carry that far. You gotta have your own, own, own style, like. You go on a, on a T.I. beat, you gonna sound like T.I. That's definitely true. Gotta sound like Coasting all the time. So, Jay, do you play any instruments? Um, not any instruments we can speak of, you know what I'm saying? But, um, I'm very off there. Alright, so what was the first song you ever wrote? And what was the first song you ever recorded? First song I ever wrote. I was in Martha's Vineyard in um, 2006. It was called Satellite. I had actually ran into a, a, a piano player from um, Boston, just crazy. And she just put out a, a melody, and I started writing a, a whole satellite song. Like, I want to be with you high up like satellite, some, some wild shit. First song I recorded was with my homie on HG Locks from the Honey Game Camp. It was called I'm Sorry. Um, you can check that out, check that out on YouTube page and all that. Um, Honey Gang Music with a Z. Um, I'm sorry. I look the whole camera we on way different high definition. That's real shit. That's real shit. So, Kosen, do you come from a musical family or are you, or are you the first person in the family to really mess around with music? Um, I won't lie. I got a strong English backing in my family. Like, they structure shit out on so. <laughs> okay, okay. Elite shit. So, um, I come from a family of poets, really. Um, music, you know, they ain't really step into it. I'm really the first one to like really jump into that. Okay, okay, that's good. That's always good to hear. You gotta be yeah. an innovator. So, so Jay, what famous musicians or rappers do you draw inspiration from? Um, I won't lie, I'm a huge Kanye fan. Okay. I got respect for Drake. I got respect for I got respect those two choices right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, See, this my love but song. on the whole, I listen to everything, right? One day that. you may catch I'm me listening to Amy Winehouse. I Next day I'm listening to Slipknot. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just so you can say that you basically draw your inspiration from all types of music. Yeah, because you, if you single yourself out, you're going to have one lane, man. We live in a world where you can conquer multiple lanes, you know what I'm saying? That's real good. got to be open to it. Uh, so have you ever been in like any competition, like music-wise? And you don't feel there's any real competition? I mean, realistically, as a man, the only competition you should have is with yourself. I respect that. Because like, if I were to say, yo, I'm going to be better than Drake, I'm going to be watching Drake and telling myself, you know what I'm saying? And I take that in my game too. Like, Locks on, try to sound like nobody else. On AC Hanson, I try to sound like nobody else. You just focus on you. And that's the problem you have in the game right now. Everybody wants to be a trapper and everybody wants to be Kanye. Yeah. Everybody just bite everybody's style to like the Bell Original. I just want to you, girl. So your people got that Migos flow. Yeah. About how long and how often would you say, like, practice your work? Like, if I'm your brother, you gotta be snow white, um, breathtaking kiss. You say you're charming, could um, you be my bell? If I'm not in the lab, I got headphones, that's my lab. So, so whether it's, um, I'm listening to beats fresh from the hall, uh, um, producers, yeah. or I got some reporter I need to fix up, I'm listening to myself all day. So, 
Non-stop practice. Okay. So all the performance together, before the public, before do you get nervous when you do that? Nah, I mean, nah, I'm not the nervous type because I'm um, sad for music. I be acting for um, Red City, okay, on um, Jason Black Rose. So um, there's no real need to be shy. Like, just, you gotta conquer that death, you know what I'm saying? And, and so, yeah. so tell us a little bit more about your acting. Have you been in any movies or TV shows? Tell us what you've done. Um, I've been in about four or five short films with Jason okay. Black Rose. Um, one of them was a 20 minute film with um, starring um, H.G. Handsome, I was the co-star. Um, I've done vampire short films, silent short films. I played uh, I played a, a, a soul, you know what I'm saying? Just walking around, <laughs> people not noticing me. And I walked into a room and I was dead and I had to act all bad. And, you know, some people were like, ah, nah, nigga, you see yourself dead, you ain't dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, so you're the multi-talented Jay Coaster. I like that. Yeah. So what about some of these young cats that's starting to come up in the game? Like, what advice would you give them, like, to go towards, like, towards the haters telling them not to go towards music and all that? I mean, if your mom tell you don't do music, you should probably listen to your mom. But if you got haters, you're doing something right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. All right, so what kind of exercises and practices do you do to make sure that you stay on top of your rap game? Um, one major thing um, I do is I got to stay current. So a couple years ago, people weren't saying lit. You know what I'm saying? And it was it's popping or, or the party's jumping. Now, now it's lit. You know what I'm saying? So even on my own, should have been an album mixtape, I got a song called Get Lit. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's true. Um, salute to Fabulous because um, he's the most current old head rapper in the That's game right now. Right. 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 He stays on top of the lingo. Yeah. All right, Jay. How do you handle the mistakes that you make while you're performing? Keep going. Keep going? Yeah, um, I, I learned from, um, it's going to sound odd, but I learned from Lady Gaga. She was doing a performance before she got signed, and um, the music cut off. Yeah. And she sang and rocked that shit I be telling you know, the whole time. Most people be too scared to do that. Yeah, yeah, like, if you got fear, you know what I'm saying? Like, conquer that shit because you gonna be in the light. You know what I'm saying? Paparazzi, long light, girls hitting your phone. You gonna be in some type of light, so you don't got no confidence. Yeah. And so how do you feel about all the attention? Do you enjoy it? Do you thrive off of it? I mean, realistically, to me, because I've done um, runway shows and all that, because I'm um, modeling. I, attention is nothing, you know what I'm saying? Attention is on um, the devil right now. <laughs> People strive for attention, but, you know, I just... You look and you look, but you just got to keep working. <laughs> Alright, so to you, what do you think makes a good recording session? How do you know you're about to, you know, record a hit once you hit the studio? Do you have a routine or do you just wing it? Um, for me, I get that feeling inside. Like, my heart get a little fast paced and like, my heart beats slow, you know what I'm saying? My heart start, I'm like, oh yeah, alright, so we're going to keep running with this. And I just feel it like, yeah. And then I'll come out the lab and my, my engineer is like... You fucking man. <laughs> so, you know, I got a lot of heat coming. So, like, artists, like, what would be your top two artists that you would like to make a collab with? Um, Sound or Unsigned? Both. Oh. Unsigned? I would love to do a track with Trey Pizzi right now. Um, on the Homie Locks, he did um, Gang Bang 2.0 with him. That was huge. Um, another artist I would love to work with, Unsigned, right now. Probably Japan out of the 80s side camp as well. And that's just because their drive is just phenomenal. Like it, it's bigger than it's bigger than flags and colors. It's it's about music. More than that. Yeah, I feel once you put them the flags down and your face is your flag, you can collab with anybody. So, 
for on a, on a different note for the sound on this. I mean, Kanye would be a great feat, but I feel like all the time we're going to clash <laughs> creativity wise. But um, I feel like Wiz Belief would be a good move. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of singers, so I would love to do like a Chris Brown feat. I feel good music, yeah. Right. So would you say Kanye and Chris Brown are your two favorite artists right now? Yeah, Kanye. Oh, um, yeah, Kanye, Chris Brown. I really love what Fetty Wap is doing for you know, the tri-state area. I would love to do another song like Hardcore, AC Locks, or Honey Gang in general. Did a song with him for my niggas. That song, once it takes off, that's gonna take off. But that's another, another story. Yeah, we look forward to hearing that. Hope you all too. Okay, so Jay, I heard you talking a little bit about culture before. So tell us a little bit about like you and your background. Where are you from? I was born in West Virginia, but moved up here when I was four, Bronx, New York. My mother's from England, called Jamaican and Trinidad and her. Okay. Other than that, I'm mixed up, like, people don't know what I am. I've heard um, Arabic, I've heard I'm from Sudan, I've heard uh, I'm Dominican, but I'm really just a Yachty, just okay. American. Okay, right now, right now. <laughs> Okay, so you think living in West Virginia and moving to the Bronx impacted your music? Um, I was young at the time. I mean, it definitely played a big part in, in um, my music because it's a different lifestyle. Okay. Down, down there, it's um, West Virginia is actually one of, the, one of the poorest states you can know that in, in the country. So my life would have been a lot different. Saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to be fly every day. That's true. Like in New York, you go to school not fly. You, you already know. Yeah. Okay. I'm <laughs> getting cut. Pure jokes. I'm getting <laughs> cut. All right. So you were in New York about at what age? Um, four. You were at four. So I know in middle school and high school you're probably making beats on the cafeteria table. You know, engaged in ciphers. Tell us a little bit about your high school experience. High school, um, I went to Cardinal Spelman in the Bronx, right there on Bay Chester. Um, and it's about a mile walk from 241st yeah, to that school. And shout out to my brother, um, Jamel, um, AGM Smooth. He would rap from, we hit the corner, straight to school. That's crazy. And at the time, I was like, yo, bro. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I didn't appreciate it at that time, but throughout the years, like we went to school all our lives, you know what I'm saying? From first grade all the way up. And um I started rapping with him too. So we'd go bar for bar, four bars, four bars, eight bars, eight bars, and we would just walk and pick up girls, you know how that shit is. Living life, yes, sir. Hey, so you think your neighborhood impacted your music? I heard you say something about you're not trying to be like all the artists that you hear on the radio today. Tell us how your music is different. Oh, my music is different because I don't, like, I listen to music, but I don't use it as a as a key. Like, oh, Migos got this flow, I'm going to use that flow. Oh, oh, um, Fetty got this flow, I'm going to try this flow. Nah, I, I stay true to me because... And the day, there's billions of people out there. So, if billions of people out there and a million people like this guy, why you can't get your own money? That's true. You Jay Coaster, don't be me go. You let me know. All right, so, Jay. I see you're trying to, you know, expand with your music, go farther. You're not just trying to be a rapper. You want to be an artist. What do you think is the difference between an artist and a musician? Well, a musician can be solidified to one instrument, one sound. A lot of times they may not dabble in more than one thing. They just get paid to be a musician for that. You know what I'm saying? They, that's why in, a musician plays a part in an orchestra. You know what I'm saying? But an artist can lead the orchestra. That's true. That artist can say, yo, I can play that guitar, I can play that piano, I can sing, I can harmonize, I can rap. Whatever you want to do, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big difference, man. A lot of people settle. Like, I'm not willing to settle, man. I, I see something, I'm going to go conquer it. Okay, okay. So what do you see as your goals for the next one to three years? Like, what's one 
thing that you want to make sure you accomplish from now to the Realistically, I just want to go on tour of local. Like, I want to play. Like, shows that are around here, that's that's cool and all that. But, um, me personally, like, I, I want them, them, them great British pounds. I want to I wanna cash in euros. I want to see the world. So, you know, some people chase a fame that's right here when your fame could be worldwide. But you sell it to just be here in one spot, man. It's the realest thing. All right, this is Life of the Party here with Jay Cosin. You already know. Life of the Party here with Jay Cosin. All right, Jay. We got something here for you. All right. We got a question for you, though. Are you the Life of the Party? Bring the Life of the Party. So we're in here. Open that up for me. Let's rip that bitch open, man.